The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Fridays with Vistage webinar. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some items to help you participate in today's webinar. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please call, dial, please call support at 888-259-8414. When you joined today's webinar, you selected to join either by phone or computer audio. If for any reason you'd like to change your selection, you can do so by accessing your audio pane in the control panel to the right of your screen. During the presentation, all participants are in listen-only mode. Please note that a PDF of today's presentation is available for download in your control panel. A recording of this presentation will also be sent to attendees via email within the next week. I would now like to introduce the moderator for today's webinar, Bill Black. Bill? Welcome to Fridays with Vistage. My name is Bill Black. I'm a Vistage member and speaker and your moderator today. Today's webinar is entitled Strategic HR, Your Secret Weapon in the Talent War. You know, talent tops the list of major decisions CEOs will make this year with 87% of Vistage survey respondents citing this issue as number one. Talent should be a strategic priority for your organization because a tight labor market coupled with expectations for increasing hiring means that both your recruitment and retention are becoming increasingly difficult. During this webinar, you will hear how HR must evolve, becoming more strategic to meet market demands. You'll get the tools to evaluate current efforts, and you'll gain critical insight to ad advance from a handful of HR tap tactics to a robust human capital strategy. Today's speaker is Kathleen Quinn Vota, Vistage member and speaker, author, and CEO of Talent Trust. Kathleen has decades of earning accolades in the staffing industry. However, she determined that traditional models don't always serve the best interest of clients, and she vowed to disrupt the stagnant staffing and recruiting industry. In 2003, Kathleen launched Talent Trust to help companies find, keep, and grow the best people. Her firm's expert team collaborates closely with executives to identify the root causes and often interrelated issues behind the company's human capital challenges. Her firm's clients develop an intentional culture with engaged people who are aligned with their goals and excited to contribute every day. Solutions from Talent Trust including people puzzle gap analysis, cultural alignment and engagement strategies, assessments, outsourced strategic recruiting, compensation analysis, behavioral interviewing, onboarding, and systems and processes for efficiency. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathleen Quinn Vota. Hello, Bill, and thank you for the kind introduction. I'm going to pop on screen here and welcome everyone to Fridays with Vistage webinars. We meet here often, and I'm looking forward to having a great discussion today about strategic HR. We're going to talk today about why HR needs to be strategic in your organization. We're going to give you some tools on how to evaluate whether your HR organization is strategic or not. We're going to give you some a reference to the outcomes of a strategic HR organization and, and really help you understand why this is so vitally important for your organization. We're going to wrap up with some Q&A. We already got some of your questions ahead of time, and Bill will, will walk us through that Q&A period. If we have any technical difficulties, don't worry. There's a backup plan. And I'm going to go off screen right now so we can just really focus on the content and what you want to get from today. As a Vistage member, I'm very interested in making sure this is meaningful to you, so please join in and ask those questions. So let's jump into the content. Um, I want to set the stage with some details on the current employment landscape and the specific challenges that are facing companies of your size, the Vistage community. Talent is, um, is a major issue for our clients, and they need to focus on strategic HR. Um, talent is the number one business issue for executives as Bill said in his intro, and as our Joe Galvin, who is our uh, Chief Research Officer at Vistage, highlighted as well. So everybody is planning to hire this year. I'm sure if you're on this call, you're planning to hire as well. And 87% of Vistage uh, survey respondents list this issue as number one. And really, talent really needs to be a strategic priority for you. 
Um, and we have a tight labor market that is coupled with expectations for increased hiring, we have an inventory issue. Lack of talent limits our growth, your growth, middle market growth, Vistage company growth. Some statistics to ponder here. Four in ten middle market companies say growth is restricted because of lack of talent. Another key statistic, 44% cannot find candidates with the skills they need. This is from the National Center of Middle Market. On the slide that you're looking at right now, Vistage reports that C, um, the percentage of CEOs uh, that are planning to expand their workforce in the coming year is at a 12-year all-time high. So what does this mean for you? Um, you have to put strategy around it because we're past the first five months. It's June 1st. So five months of 2018 are gone, and a lot of the hiring, almost 55%, is going to be done in the next um, month of the year. So competition for qualified employees is absolutely fierce out there based on this statistic and also the statistic that our, our employees are much more confident right now. And statistics show that people are open to, 76% of your workforce is either open to or actively engaged in a conversation with another firm and, more, and different employment. So with 70% hiring and 76% of your current employees open to or actively engaged in another position, we have a huge situation on our hands. So, Adding headcount is really important, according to Joe Galvin, the Chief Research Officer at Vistage. But it's also equally important is retaining, developing, engaging your existing talent. And we're going to touch on that as well today. I had the um, pleasure to sit on a panel at ACG Intergrowth in early May with um, Tom Stewart, the, the um, National Center for Middle Market Executive Director, and he also uh, agrees with Joe Galvin then that finding, developing, and keeping talent has become the middle market's biggest challenge. Further in this report, um, which we are happy to share with you in follow-up to this webinar today, um, there's some bad news. Bad news is there's lack of extensive brand awareness to the candidate community for middle market companies. Middle market companies have a leaner HR function, which we're going to spend more time on today. Um, and, and they have less robust talent forecasting tools on recruiting, training, et cetera. Um, they maintain a stronger focus, HR focus on transactional issues versus strategic issues, uh, which stifle creativity. They also lack a strategy for identifying current and future skills gaps. So it's the ability to look forward in your company. Um, they can't get as many opportunities for professional development and career advancement. And they get fewer resources than larger companies from external resources like educational institutions, trade associations, government organizations, etc. So again, this is the bad news. Um, and I'm going to focus on happier news, but and I, we will supply you with this report and follow up. Um, and HR is evolving. That's the good news. You don't have to be typical. You don't have to be like everybody else out there. Middle market companies are constantly changing. They're very agile. They're learning. They're evolving to overcome our unique challenges. So this creates an awesome environment in which to grow your company. And increasingly, mid-sized companies are waking up and taking control of their workforce challenges. Um, after years and years of hearing Jim Collins, the author of you know, um, the famous book, uh, tell us that you have to get the right people on the bus, um, companies are really recognizing that HR strategies are what attract and retain the right people. And attracting and retaining are equally import, important in this market. And HR leaders are assuming more strategic roles at the side, side by side with the CEO. And it's starting to pay off. 
Um, and as this particular magazine cover from Harvard Business Review suggests, um, we have an image problem. Human resources has an image problem that we have to address head on. If you will for a minute, let's align um, our perception of salespeople. And many times you hear in business that salespeople are sleazy. They're used car salespeople. Um, I'm in the sales profession, and you hear that. We have to be brave enough to face the fact that HR needs a facelift, or as a Harvard Business Review suggests, it needs to be blown up and build something new and compelling and strategic to move us forward. And blow up this image of HR is not strategic. I'm going to give you some tools today to do that. This is what strategic HR should look like. And this is um, take out your pens and your paper, take some notes, but relax because we're going to send you all of this content because as a Vistage member, I want you to be able to absorb it and use it in your firm. Um, previously high-level strategy meetings ended with some afterthoughts. Um, oh, should we tell HR about that? Should we talk to them about it because HR wasn't in the room? Or sometimes it would, do we have to tell HR about that? Do we have to let them know what we're doing strategically? What does that matter to them? So HR is right now traditionally seen as a cost center relegated to administrative and transactional backroom responsibilities. Um, an HR expert that we follow, Dr. Christopher Lee, uses his profoundly crafted former departmental slogan that goes like this. We take care of those who take care of business. As an example of our wrong-headedness about the role of HR, this kind of thinking created a dual perspective where employees saw HR as a provider of perks and protection, and leadership saw HR and still sees HR as superfluous to business. And that is just not the case moving forward. If that's the mindset in your company, it's time to stand up and change it. With both sides buying into this picture, HR's potential has been undervalued, underappreciated, and underutilized throughout history. Today, um, it, it's nearly impossible for great companies to achieve goals without the support of strategic HR initiatives. Holding on to outdated views of what HR should be and, and do just make your company less effective overall. Um, if you don't already have an um, outstanding CHRO or VP of HR or Director of HR or Manager of HR or Talent Acquisition Planner, there's all different kinds of titles depending on the size of your company. I hope you will immediately begin to seek one or, seek the, or, or really seek the help of someone who's a subject matter expert in this role. Having a strategic HR leader on your team or business partner will help you ensure that you have a competitive edge in both winning and retaining the best people. And again, it's about winning, attracting, and retaining. You cannot grow your business without one. And that statistic I shared earlier about 44% of positions can't be, be filled um, is really one of the most compelling reasons to take a look at this. So what does HR, a strategic HR practice look like? The focus of strategic HR is about harnessing and channel, channeling human capital to benefit the business as a whole. So here's the key point, to benefit the business as a whole. Strategic HR still needs to perform all the other transactional responsibilities, but they have to make a difference in the strategic HR focus to no longer work in a silo. They have to stand side by side and, when it, and set performance expectations, establish rewards programs, determine benefits, and a strategic HR department works closely with other functional departments and outside advisors. Together, together they're better, and together they make sure HR practices are integrated with other business strategies. Let, let's look at some examples here. A strategic HR department may work with operations to initiate partnerships 
with consortiums and networks. In this way, HR helps leverage the efforts of several companies in the same region or industry to train specialized workers. A couple examples that, that we have had the um, pleasure of working with is a, um, a company in the Co uh, Colorado marketplace that about $50 million, they're in a business that requires welders. As anybody who might be in construction or manufacturing know, there's a shortage of welders out there. So what did this company do? They went out and um, started to build a welder training organization on their premise. And originally, the training was for them to serve it, them internally, but it turned into a profit center because as they're training welders, other companies in the geographic area are looking for welders, and so they started to turn it into um, revenue for the company. So that was a very innovative way, innovative way that human resources, um, a subject matter expert, and the company looked at things differently versus struggling because they didn't have the supply. They created the supply. Another great example of how strategic HR works to enable the company's growth is a large hospitality organization um, worked with a um, basic skills organization um, to um, train their line cooks. And anybody in the hospitality business knows line cooks are hard to find. Um, and so they worked with them to under, underwrite the training so those people became their employees after they came out of training. So where there was no pipeline, this hospitality company that was very large, created a, pi a pipeline and made the investment in training to ensure that the company in all of their geographic locations had line cooks. So it's, it's, it's a different mindset and, the, you know, and it, our thought processes need to evolve. HR leaders can earn a lot of respect and a respected seat at the table by developing workforce programs and plans that solve business issues versus setting up policy or, um, that punishes people. As part of your executive team, strategic HR will directly contribute to a company's goals and profitability. A truly strategic HR leader serves as a supportive link between all of the company's uh, employees, teams, and development. So what are the traits of, a, of today's CHRO, um, which stands for Chief Human, Resource, Chief Human Resources Officer, say that five times quickly, it's a, it's a twister, um, or insert the title that's appropriate for your size company. It might be manager, it might be director, it might be VP, it, you know, so don't get hung up on the title, please. Um, what is that, what are the traits that you should be looking for? What matters in today's forward-thinking HR strategic organization? Um, they take a strategic and future-oriented point of view. They look forward. They can look forward into your business and forecast what you need, what you want, see the, um, see the cliffs coming, see the, see the supply and demand, give you real numbers and use metrics. They focus on business results and the company's competitive advantage. They use marketing expertise. You know, marketing is underutilized, but they use marketing expertise and perspective in creating and maintaining your employment brand. You're all probably really good at a customer brand, but you might not be that great at your employment brand. They emphasize the candidate experience in the recruitment process. I was just on the phone earlier today with one of our customers in Omaha, Nebraska, and because of their internal um, uh, scheduling, they lost a candidate because they canceled her interview because they couldn't get their schedule together, and so they lost someone. So um, they're very upset that they lost this person to another company, but it's their own fault because they couldn't, um, they weren't focused on the candidate experience. And the, the result of rescheduling, somebody says, I'm just really not that important. They also concentrate on jobs and talent with the biggest business impact on revenue, growth margin, and profitability. 
They use data rather than intuition or emotion for recruiting, learning, and predicting performance. They invest both internal and external in strategies to win and keep people. And they show business acumen in the role of a talent advisor. So again, aligning revenue, gross margin, and profitability and how their function, their efforts, what they're trying to do is going to move the company forward. Um, so I want you to stop for a minute and, and think about a couple questions. How is HR evolving in your organization? Just write it down on a piece of paper. Is it becoming more strategic to meet market demands? How can strategic HR become your secret weapon in the war for talent? Just take a minute, answer those questions, and I'll tell you a story. Um, I was presenting to a group of human resources professionals at the end of 2017. It was my honor to do so. And I was uh, sharing with them that recruitment is a sales process. Um, and it's one of my talks that I deliver around the country. And one of the HR uh, attendees raised her hand and, said, and asked me a question. Um, and she's the HR leader in her organization. She asked the question that went like this. Well, what if they don't let me do this? I love your ideas, but what if they don't let me do this? And so, of course, I asked her a question back. Do you own the function? And she said, yes, I do. I said, well, it's time for you to take the reins and tell them you're the subject matter expert. And this is what we need to do to ensure our, the health and wellness of our organization and show them and use data on why it's really important. So again, that goes to the HR image. It's up to human resources and the executive team to shift the image of HR into a strategic business partner. So hopefully you've had some time to write down your answers. Um, and make sure that you um, address those in your organization. So um, the value of people is really important, and leaders are not putting the appropriate focus on people, unfortunately, still. Um, Corn Ferry found in a recent in-depth study of 800 global companies that 67% of CEOs believe technology will create more value than human capital will over the next few years. And 40%, 44%, excuse me, of leaders in the study believe that people will become largely irrelevant in the future of work. And in an upcoming second release, which is what, where I want to focus, of this study's finding, Corn Ferry will show that human capital actually has more than two times the value of tangible assets, which is a potential value of $1.2 trillion. Let me restate that. Human capital actually has more than two times the value of tangible assets. Companies, your company, my company, spend close to 40 to 80 percent, depending on your company and what, how you do business, of gross revenues on salary and benefits. Human capital is significant investment. It needs to be calculated and leveraged in a strategic manner. These data points support the ROI for an investment and an HR strategy to support and drive your business strategy. Um, so what does victory look like in the war for talent? Ultimately, you easily attract and retain the best talent in, the, in a very competitive labor market. And people, people become your competitive advantage. The outcomes are, are um, I'll dive into a little bit more, you cultivate an intentional culture, and culture is foundational to anything you're doing around talent. More than 50% of executives say corporate culture influences things like productivity, creativity, profitability, and yet only 15% say their own corporate culture is exactly where it needs to be. I have the pleasure of speaking to a member group in Arizona, and we spent three and a half hours talking about culture. Um, and they were very engaged in what does culture look like, how do you manage culture, how do you measure culture, um, and they're very concerned about culture because culture is one of the big reasons why people choose companies. Um, you can promote, another outcome is you promote an accurate and compelling employment brand. 
Um, you have a powerful brand on the customer side, <clears throat> but you need one on the employment brand side to aid with recruitment and retention. Next, you develop a pipeline of qualified candidates so you're not hiring in crisis mode. You're, you cultivate relationships with candidates in the same way that you build relationships with customers or, or clients. Then you establish a hiring process that's strategic and well-defined. Train everyone to consistently evaluate candidates and hire with confidence. You are aware of the supply and demand for key roles in your industry or geography. Have you ever gone to fill a job and wondered where, where, where did all the people go? Well, it's really a supply and demand issue. You're going to benchmark your salary and make sure that your benefits and your compensation are aligned with your competition. And know the compens compensation is a top consideration for job seekers and the, the wage situation is only going to get more interesting um, as we continue to uh, um, grow and evolve out there as businesses. Next, you're going to maximize your investment on new hires. Um, and 58% of new hires are more likely to stay when you have a complete, a structured onboarding process. So maximizing your investment in new hires and onboarding is critical to keeping them and retaining them. As I said earlier, attracting is, is important, but retention is just as important in, in where the marketplace is now. Boosting engagement with training. Um, companies are with highly engaged workforces outperform peers by 147% in earnings per share. Let me read that again. Companies with highly engaged workforces outperform peers by 147% in earnings per share. Um, that is a huge statistic. And companies with highly engaged workers experience 41% fewer quality defects. They have better safety, et cetera. So when I cite statistics, I like to read them because sometimes I mess them up. So that is a really compelling statistic. Continually in innovate your people um, best practices. You're strategic in forecasting your internal needs and understanding the impact of external forces. It's very important, obviously, to measure these outcomes. So how are you going to measure this? Um, the way we work is changing at a rapid pace. So we really need strategic HR to help navigate these huge shifts. Um, to set the stage, there's, there's more on key trends. Um, and also, we have a tool for you that's, out, that's called our 2018 Hiring Guide um, that we can share with you as a resource and follow up. Um, but I'll view some of that with you today. Um, te as technology becomes um, much more entrenched in the workplace, Replacing people with robots and automating the unimaginable, as you can, you know, I saw on 60 Minutes the other day a, a tool that actually can, can um, be put into your ear and it gives you the Internet of Things. Pretty wild what's happening with technology. And Jack Aldrich, I just saw speak at a Vistage Summit. He is, if you haven't Googled him and seen some of his forward thinking um, things on technology, it's amazing. Um, but we're still going to have a labor shortage, and we will always need human beings, human skills, empathy, creativity, um, but we're going to be working together in a very different way, and we need to start addressing some change. Teams are replacing hierarchy. Flexibility is replacing structure. Speed is increasingly important. And people are working from home more and take work home. Organizations are empowering rather than controlling people. And everyone at every level is learning continuously. Most of these changes are being driven by millennials, and they're now almost half of the workforce. And their, their younger cohorts, Gen Zs, are coming up right behind them, people. Baby boomers are moving out. Um, they're moving into their, their 70s. They want to retire or, or boomerang back into the workforce in a very different way. So how do you evaluate your current team? How do you know if you have a strategic HR team or a tactical HR team to, to really know where you are so you can start building uh, HR from a strategic viewpoint? I've, I've already offered a few examples, but I'm going to give you a couple tools that will be even more helpful. First, um, tool number one, look at your current recruitment process 
and evaluate it to determine if it's tactical or strategic. Um, by adopting recruitment as a sales process, you'll really experience candidate choice to address short and long-term needs. You'll compare multiple candidates for each position versus higher a candidate in isolation. You'll, not, you'll, you'll look beyond your immediate needs and consider opportunistic hiring, game changers, A players, who can really bring your company to the next level. So let me talk about these stages. Do you have a robust lead generation, step number one, to fill the top of the funnel with a lot of choice for candidates in your hard to fill positions? Do you know who you're marketing to? For, to come to your company? Do you have a social media um, footprint that people can follow? How are people finding you out there? Are you known or unknown to people? How will they know about your culture? How will they know who you are? How will they know how to find you? How will they know how, that you even have a job opening? I was talking to a customer yesterday that is a rapidly growing construction company and they are, have a marvelous, marvelous culture and a great story to tell. They've been on the Inc. 5000 year after year after year after year. Uh, they just put together a new website. And so while I was in his office, I pulled up the new website, and he's telling me about all these positions that they're struggling with and, um, and that we're working on with them, and we were talking about compensation. And as I was opening his website, guess what? absolutely none of the positions that, that, that are on his website. So we're in a new process with them, and he sat there, dropped his pen in astonishment that obviously nobody knew beyond their four walls what, their, what positions are critical to them or how to actually engage with them. So we're working with them to move from unknown to known and create robust lead generation for them so, so they have choice when they get to hiring project managers, foremen, um, technicians, et cetera. So um, lead generation is absolutely critical so your hiring managers are empowered and they have choice in the hiring process. Step two is candidate engagement. I told, um, I told you about the Omaha, Nebraska customer who lost a great proposal writer um, because they couldn't, they couldn't schedule an interview. And guess what? She took another job because the other firm could really move a little bit faster. So how are you treating your candidates from the first touch to the offer? How are you engaging with them? Are you sending them handwritten notes? Are you thanking them for choosing you for a discussion? It is a two-way street out there, and candidate engagement, just like prospect engagement, is vital to your success. Step three, candidate screening and assessment. Make sure you have this dialed in so you know what you're screening for. You use assessment tools to, to um, review people's uh, thinking style, their behavioral traits, and top interests. There's wonderful tools out there. And step four, interviewing. Do your hiring managers know how to have uh, in, a behavioral-based interview? I'd say most people I talk to, they have no structure around this whatsoever. And um, it's damaging to your brand from your employment brand, and you're probably losing candidates because you're not focused on training your hiring managers to actually have a compelling interview. Um, so this is an, a huge area of investment um, an opportunity for you because many of your hiring managers are making decisions to bring in people who are making $30,000, $40,000, $200,000 position, so you want to prepare them for that critical interview because they're making a very important decision for your company. And often they're just not trained. And, and obviously step five, the final step is the offer. Be, do your research ahead of time. Don't just say, well, we budgeted to pay X. Do your research. We have tools for our clients to, to inform them what the marketplace is, is actually providing from a compensation perspective, um, and, and yes, I'm here to tell you wages are going to increase. So I have um, an hour-long Fridays with Vistage webinar on just this topic. Um, I encourage you to access it and follow up 
on this particular piece. But this is one tool. You can take this slide and just go back to your HR team to see if, see if they are actually um, putting in place these processes and systems. Second tool that you can use to evaluate your human resources organization is really from um, our friends over at uh, Burson, which is a division of Deloitte. They created a talent acquisition maturity model. It's pictured here. I know it might be hard for you to read, but when we send you the slides, you'll see it. Um, it really can help assess you, help you assess your HR um, organization, whether they're tactical or strategic, and where they fall on this um, benchmark. So if your organization is on level one, but really aspires to be two, three, or four, which most of you will, you're not alone, so don't, so don't freak out. Um, Burson's study of 300 companies found that the majority of companies out there are really at level one, which is a reactive tactical recruiting situation. We call it post and pray around here at Talent Trust. But our work you know, supports Burson's study because most, most people come in at level one, and, and unfortunately, sometimes they come in at level zero. Let me share with you one of our clients in oil and gas. Um, we, we did this assessment for them. It's called our People Puzzle Gap Analysis. And um, the CHRO of the organization actually used this scorecard to go into the executive team because they were pretty much a level one or maybe even a level zero that I haven't even put on here. Um, and, and she used the scorecard um, and this person data that we helped her uncover in the report to go into the executive team and talk about what they needed to do to build a great culture and employment brand and retain their people. So um, it's pretty powerful. But this for you, um, who you're the listeners on the call today, can really be compelling for you to assess whether you have a strategic or tactical organization. So high impact, here, here's some other key findings of this study. One, high impact talent acquisition improves overall business outcomes. Um, number two, developing a strong relationship with hiring managers is key. And number three, candidate pool development is the second most influential talent acquisition performance driver. And remember I talked about that in the first tool. Um, so, so it all kind of this all ties together. Hopefully, you can you can see that. And the final um, tool that you can use is really you know going beyond just talent acquisition, and um, and and really um, doing a gap analysis on where you are in your people strategy. This is something you can do it do yourself using the webinar for Vistage that I've offered previously. Um, and complete with the help, or complete with the help of experts like us. It's the first step in really engaging with our clients to really diagnose what's happening in your people organization. You know, just as you in, just as you gauge your capabilities and needs for things like equipment, supplies, facilities, you can really map out a strat strategy, 12 months, 18 months, on your people. It's really the best way. Um, to get to the root causes of the problems, such as chronic open positions, high turnover. These are symptoms of problems. And it, you, you, I mean, most people who I talked to originally, they don't know what their issues are. So um, they come to us to really diagnose it. So I have another webinar. Um, it's Fridays with Vistage webinar. And, um, and that digs into this topic as well. Um, and you can Google any of our Fridays with Vistage webinars. So um, before we jump into Q&A, I wanted to um, kind of recap some of the things that I've said to you today. Um, one, we have, to, we have to really change the image of human resources and really take a stand who we are, what we, what we stand for, and how we can drive business outcomes. Um, and have a conversation internally about why your company needs to invest in strategic HR and what it should look like. Use the tools that I have shared with you today to measure, um, and to measure your current um, HR organization. Is it strategic? 
Is it tactical? And if you're a human resources practitioner on the phone, be brave enough to do it for yourself. Be brave enough to grade yourself and, and put together a report of what you need to become more strategic to help the company grow. Use the tools that we're going to send you in follow-up from our 2018 hiring guide, our net, the National Center for Middle Market Report, which will help you with specific recommendations on what to do, including all the information from this um, webinar. Read articles like in Harvard Business Review, it's time to blow up HR and, our, and build something new. If you're an HR practitioner, be part of the change, be part of the solution. If you're an executive, empower your HR people to, to take this on head on. Don't be irrelevant like the woman who joined that session I told you about who said, what if they don't let me? It's in your power to do so. Look at some of the traits of a senior HR leader that, was, that I put on one of these slides. You know, they focus on business results. That's where you need to spend your time. And then lastly, make sure you measure where you are so you can, you can start somewhere. This is, a big, this is a, going to be a big undertaking. It's not, just, it's not just one of us. It's the sum of us attacking this issue, putting HR into a better light, measuring things like our recruitment processes and systems, using the Burson data that's out there. I just showed you one tool from Burson, but you know, if you write down Burson by Deloitte, you will get a lot of data. Go out there and read their report that comes out every single year, and there's provocative, innovative, forward-thinking tools that you can use. And lastly, go beyond, you know, just looking at um, your company and invite people who are, invite people who, um, who are subject matter experts into your organization. In my experience since 1985 in this field, I have found HR people to be scared to death to bring in subject matter experts that might know something more than they do. Well, you know what? Every other function in your companies are smart about bringing in subject matter experts where it can help them be better and learn and enable the company to grow. So um, also, I invite you to continue to engage with our content and take out your smartphone and text 44222 and the word people puzzle with no space. Let me repeat that. Take out your smartphone and text 44222 and type in the word people puzzle with no space. It will prompt you what you need to do next and you can continue to engage with us and our content. We'll send you today's deck plus follow-up materials like the 2018 hiring guide, the National Center for Middle Market Report, plus more links to some of the related Fridays and Vistage webinars I've been mentioning throughout this conversation today. So it has been absolutely wonderful to talk to all of you today. Um, and I'm going to turn it back over to Bill for Q&A. And I invite you to engage with us and get educated and move HR into the light and into a strategic model. Bill? Kathleen, as we've come to expect from you, you covered the subject matter clearly and thoroughly today. Thank you so much. We have a few questions for you. Uh, and the first one is, in a labor market that's especially short on supply, and given the examples of construction laborers and tradespeople, how do you overcome that lack of supply and increase awareness to this career path? That's a wonderful question. And thank you for all the Q&A. I, I love it. Um, you know, construction and manufacturing and most other industries out there are, are having a supply and demand issue right now. And um, it's, it's some of the examples that I gave you, moving from unknown to known, are really what you're going to have to do. So remember the conversation I had about the company who needed welders? Well, they created a pipeline of welders because they created a training school. Um, another, the other example I gave you about the company, hospitality company that had no line cooks, well, they aligned themselves with an organization that trained people in skills like line cooks, and they got first dibs on those people. And then they created a pipeline for the community. Um, I also, specifically in construction and manufacturing, we have to make those industries sexy again. 
And so if you have great people, which I'm sure you do, have them go to schools and talk to kids um, who are in high school who are trying to figure out what they're going to be. Um, and what we've done from an academic perspective and in parenting is we've made manufacturing and construction um, dirty. That those are jobs you shouldn't want to do. You should want to work in an office, wear a tie, wear a skirt, um, and you know not do dirty jobs. Um, we have to make it compelling again and show people that there's a lot of technology being used in construction, a lot of uh, innovative um, technology and new tools in, in manufacturing as well. We have to share the story of how the senior leaders got to where they were and what's happening now in manufacturing and construction that is compelling, that does align to technology. You've got to show them. You've got to paint the picture. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of talent to do that. That's why it's strategic. It's not tactical. So hopefully that's helpful to the person who asked the question. Terrific. Uh, one other question we have here is, uh, do you recommend using technology tools to evaluate talent and LMSs or LCMSs to retain and develop it? I sure do. We use a lot of technology at Talent Trust, and a lot of our clients hire us so they don't have to invest in the technology. So, um, for example, we have an applicant tracking system, and many companies that are um, Vistage-esque, if you will, they just don't even have an applicant tracking system. They have no idea what their inventory is. They just don't know where to start. So there's lots of applicant tracking systems out there that are cost effective and um, could help you organize. Um, there's also assessment tools out there. There's a plethora of assessment tools that you can use and it's all online. Um, learning training right now, I think that LMS is speaking about learning management software specifically. Um, it is critical that you train people from a retention perspective. Because remember, I was emphasizing on attracting and retaining, because that needs to be a dual concern for you right now. Um, getting people tools so they can learn digitally is going to be really a great investment for you. So especially because the millennials and the Gen Zs expect you to have the cool new technology. And millennials by 2020 is going to be 75% of our workforce. So technology, there's explosive technology out there in the people sector, explosive technology. And Talent Trust has, um, um, could offer you a lot of tools. And in our gap analysis, we look at what technology you're using on the people side right now, and then we make recommendations for the latest and greatest technology. Because you could, you could go crazy with that investment, but there's some really great tools that we've already tested that we could recommend. Perfect. Thank you. Kathleen, how do we honestly elevate our current HR team? Well, the first thing you have to do is use the tools I gave you, the three tools to assess where you are. So assess their attitude and aptitude for more strategic endeavors. Does your highest level HR professional have the skills to really be a visionary or strategic change agent? Sometimes that is not the case. Um, and you have to be honest about it. If you offload or outsource much of your tactical work that um, the, the current HR leader managers, do they have the capacity to be more strategic? And um, if, if the answer is no, um, is there an outside strategist that can help you partner for an interim or a long-term basis? So um, it, it, really, it really starts with assessment first. And again, our gap analysis helps assess our clients and our clients' people to see if they're the ones to lead them into this um, endeavor. All right. So uh, here's another question for you. What are the main areas where strategic HR should focus specifically for middle market companies? Well, um, as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, and as a best practice from the National Center for Middle Market, they note that human capital should focus on Number one, attraction. Number two, performance management, which is aligned with retention. Number three, development, which is also aligned with retention. And four, talent planning, knowing what they need for the growth of the company. The, the report and our work with our clients also 
um, best performing middle market companies undertake comprehensive talent planning approach, which is um, looking at the entire people puzzle, if you will allow me to say that, um, to see how all of the fit together. So looking at culture and engagement, et cetera, um, and tools and software and, and training. And it's a powerful combination um, that creates momentum for aligning strategy and culture. Um, that's really where they should start. Terrific. And uh, we have one other question here, Kathleen. What internal teams does strategic HR need to align with? Well, in my opinion, um, I, HR really needs to report into the chief executive officer. And in many companies, it reports into the chief financial officer. I think that's one change you could make. Um, and the HR leader needs a seat at the table. They need a voice. They can't just be an administrative function you delegate stuff to. Um, whether it's a him or a her, they need to be directly connected to the overall business strategy and be integral. Um, HR needs to you know, be very close to the crafting the vision, and they need to work closely with sales and marketing leaders. Um, often we leave sales and marketing leaders out of the conversation when it comes to human resources, but they create messaging that could really help um, the HR organization, and it, uh, and it parallels between the company brand and your employment brand. And um, they really should also align with the ops leader. I don't think anybody could be um, left out of the equation, but the most important takeaway is that the HR leader needs a seat at the table, which really means they have to be valued. They can't just do lip service. You have to really value the function and have them be part of the business strategy, not just an administrative uh, policies, procedures, payroll, benefits organization. Now, yes, I agree that has to get done. The tactics have to get done, but you have to have enough people that, um, and the right leader to make sure there's enough strategy getting done as well. Kathleen, from your perspective in this tight job market, are you seeing an increase in companies using tools like Phantom Stock and other types of tools like that to retain key people? Um, yes and no. I was just with a construction organization yesterday, and they, they have some Phantom Stock in place, whatnot, um, and it's just not working at the moment. People want the money in their pocket on a weekly basis. It really depends, it's a big question, um, it depends on the level of employee that you're talking about and what motivates them. You know, you can have different incentive plans for different levels in the organization, and you should really first start with asking them what they want versus crafting something that's not aligned with, their, with what's important to them. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Kathleen, any final comments for our listeners today? I, I really um, can follow up if you've texted 44222 and the word people puzzle with no space, you're going to get a lot of our um, links to our other Fridays with Vistage webinars that I've referenced in the conversation today. We're happy to help with any kind of consultation um, and, and helping you really decode this because for the next three to five years, this is going to be a struggle for most companies and we're here to help. You're always a popular speaker, and we invite you back anytime, Kathleen. Thank you so much for sharing your, wall, your wisdom today, and it's great, great knowledge for our listeners. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it very much. I want to remind you uh, that upcoming we have a Friday, June 15, 2018, at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, a webinar on cyber threats and solutions for small and mid-sized businesses. Join Joe Galvin, Chief Research Officer for Vistage, and his panel of subject matter experts to learn how to assess your risk and apply best practices in the area of people, process, and technology to create an effective cybersecurity strategy. Again, that's Friday, June 15th. Don't miss that webinar. On behalf of Vistage Worldwide, this is Bill Black wishing you continued success. Thank you for joining us today. This concludes today's webinar.